from Xfinity Center. Just wrapping up there is the George State at 71. 64 over GW. On Wayne Viner. That's Jack Rockenberg. Coming over for football. Help us out with basketball tonight as Bruce is away from the microphone. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. Jack, what does Tina go like tonight? Yeah, it was a big struggle for the turn from the half court offense. They couldn't get a lot going, but one common fact of it I, I saw in the first game and this game was Cruz will have the force to be reckoned with down low. He 18 points, 15 rebounds tonight, and he showed why he was one of the big offseason recruits that Turgeon wanted to bring in here. He's, he's dominant down low, and he showed that in full force tonight. Well, he was a big pickup. That's Russell, the leader of the band, you would say. He hits the step back three. Visions of Anthony Cowan. I wasn't sure why he was going to shoot that because he hasn't been a great outside shooter. But boy, when Maryland needed it, he hits the three ball. I thought the Terps were going to find a way to come back and win by 20. And it came down to GW at the other end of the court, rims out a three ball to tie it, and then Maryland closes the deal. Um, seemed like one of those like Thanksgiving tournaments or Christmas week tournaments. The game starts at 6.30. The crowd arrives late. Here comes Q behind us. We'll wait for him to go by. Uh, he had a huge game. You could see why everybody wanted him. And I guess we're happy Maryland has him. Uh, in one of the videos from the first game, I said he doesn't really have a center's body. And what I meant was he's not big like Caleb Wesson from Ohio State. Like, uh, uh, who else Who else is that size? Kofi Coburn. Right, right. He isn't that, but, man, he can play inside. Uh, what's your take on his efficiency? Yeah, he, he's he been very efficient down low, but it's also him from the free throw line. He's a great free throw shooter, which is going to pay dividends for the Terps down the stretch of the season, which is big, and he showed that tonight. In, in the, late in the second half, he missed a couple, but his ability to also get to the line is going to be big for the Terps. It is. This, this had a, a more of a regular season look to this game. We'll be back in a moment uh, to talk a little more about this. Here's a word from the big dog himself, Rick Jacklich. We love our clients, and you'll see that if you trust us at the Jacklich Small Group, the big dogs from the small firm. Find us online at bigdogsmallfirm.com. Network Solutions. Managed IT and technical support, Viner Forgates makes your company work. Solutions to protect your business from WatchGuard, including firewalls and endpoint protection. Protect your company and make your company work with solutions from Viner Forgates. So thanks for sticking with us through the break. Jack's going to cover the press conference here in a minute as uh, Turgeon will get ready to speak soon about this victory. Vermont comes in on Saturday at 2, and we'll be back for that as well. Uh, you talked about Q in the middle, Juju, Julian Reese. Boy, is he a natural player. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, he's someone that's going to be great for the Terps off the bench this season, someone that can come in behind Q and give that big presence down low, which is also going to help out the Terps a lot. Eric Ayala had a subpar night. One of the guys you think of, of as the Turf leader could not buy a three-pointer. What, Maryland shoots three of 15? Three of 20 from, from three. Three of 20. You don't win many games when you go three for 20, do you? Definitely not. Definitely not. Um, not sure why. I mean, they were open threes. This was not a contested game like that. GW looks like they preferred that Maryland shoot the three ball. And for a while it worked. Uh, Maryland trails at the half, comes out, scores the first eight points. Like, okay. Terps are rolling now. GW comes right back. Maryland stretches the lead, and inside of a couple minutes, it was 12. And then GW goes on a seven-point run and eventually gets it to a three-point lead. The Terps fight back. So, look, everybody has some uneven performances. Akron almost beat Ohio State. Navy beat 25 Virginia. This game, although you're a little younger, they used to have a tournament that was at then the Verizon Center, probably at the MCI Center downtown. Um, and almost every year, GW would find a way to beat Maryland. But that's back when Gary Williams was the coach. So GW beat GW. Um, and it looked like it was going to be that. Did you have any actual doubts 
down the stretch is a, is a younger man who hasn't seen these yeah. type of games here. Yeah, there weren't any doubts, I don't think, but it was definitely a little nerve-wracking, especially because, as you said, George Washington made that late push, and I think they actually cut it down to two points at one point. So, and I think it was pretty ironic that that's Russell was the one who hit that three, shooting three of 20 as a team, but they ended the night making that three-pointer kind of put the game out of, out of reach for the Colonials. All right, so before we go inside, Ricky Lindo. I, I was a Ricky Lindo fan when he wore number 14 and played here. He wears number four, played for GW tonight. He had some fantastic silver shoes on, but, you know, he had the game to match. What would you make of Ricky Lindo? Yeah, I thought his ability to shoot the three-pointer was a big thing that he wasn't able to do as a turf, but showed off tonight, and he had a great game. I thought he played very well, and sad that he's not with the Terps anymore, but I'm glad that he's doing well with, with George Washington. And, and he, he was, for him, he was spectacular at times. So, for Jack Rothenberg, I'm Wayne Viner. Of course, Bruce is away from the microphone, and, and Mason will be back at the Maryland Games here in a couple weeks. Uh, we bid you good evening from Xfinity Center as the Terps take it over GW.